like ace-jack, might hit a 10 to win, and a hand like 3-9 certainly has a chance to fill up against you. But you're going to win big pots against the queens. You could even win a big pot against the 3-9s if a flop were to come like this. Obviously, we're always looking to flop straights, but, but as you saw with that jack-10, sometimes when you make a straight with, with the jack-10, you're going to be up against um, some hands that have some very live outs against you. Um, also, of course, when the flop comes something like this, you have a nice drawing hand. Even if you're up against an ace-king or an ace-jack, their hands aren't going to affect your hand. Either you're going to hit your three or your eight. If you do, again, you might win a big pot against one of these two hands. And also against the hands like the nines or the queens, if you play reasonably aggressive and maybe you try and bluff on the flop or something with the straight draw, you might even get the hands like these to fold. So again, you aren't going to be running into the trouble flops like you might with jack-10. If a flop comes like this, you know that you're on a semi-bluff. You know that you need to make your straight to win. So you're not going to be flopping a good hand that still loses to a better hand. And those are the hands that you need to avoid when you're playing in No Limit Hold'em. Also, if you were to flop two pair with this hand, there's really no card, there's no other third card that can get you in big trouble, except, of course, for nine or queen. If it comes in nine and you're up against three nines or six and five, well, that, well that's just bad luck. Um, likewise with the queen. But, you know, more common might be a flop like this. And, and here's a typical flop where you might get quite a bit of action. You flop two pair, you're up against an ace-king or an ace-jack, and you might get a lot of action there. And you pretty much know where you stand. Uh, if, if the board pairs an ace, you know you're probably in trouble. In fact, if the next card were to come an ace, and let's look at that scenario, you would know that you almost have no chance of winning. In fact, if, if the turn comes an ace, you lose to all of these hands. So basically, almost every hand that might have opened from early or middle position has you beat now. So you're not going to lose a big pot. You know, maybe you made a bet and, and your opponent called, and now the next card comes an ace. Well, you just know you're beat. You're going to fold. You're not going to lose any more money. The real problem with that jack-10 hand is there are a number of flops where it looks like you have a good hand, but you're actually beat. And those are the kinds of situations you're trying to avoid when you're playing No Limit Hold'em. Okay, we're now going to look at um, one of the ways that you might want to deviate, again, from the pre-flop strategy. And uh, one thing you'll almost see um, all top players do, at least on occasion, is to limp in. Uh, and that would be to enter the pot without raising uh, from an early position. And, um, of course, when you limp in, uh, you're sort of inviting people, thinking, well, maybe you've got a weak hand and they're going to raise you and get you to fold. But, but one of the favorite plays of intermediate players and better is to limp in with a hand like two aces. You know, of course, most, most people aren't going to think you have two aces. The only problem with limping in with two aces, though, is first of all, an experienced player will always be suspicious of an early position limp in. Um, and, and certainly they're going to become quite suspicious if you limp in and then it gets raised behind you and then it comes around and now you make a big raise. So actually, in some ways, it's almost harder to win a big pot if you limp in with two aces. If you were to just open the pot with two aces and now someone behind you has, has a good hand like two jacks or two queens, well, now they might raise you. And now you've gotten them to commit quite a bit of chips uh, and you have them badly beat. If you limp in and the hand with two jacks makes a raise, now it comes around to you and you make a big re-raise, they'll probably be able to get away from the hand and they'll be able to throw away their two jacks. And you actually end up winning a smaller pot by, by, uh, by uh, limping in. But one of the things that you might want to do to add a little trickery to your game, and again, I don't want you doing this every time, is you know every once in a while, maybe, I mean, it, it's really not going to be often, but maybe occasionally you, you limp in with two aces. But a play that I'd rather make by limping in up front might be to limp in with a hand like ace-king. One thing about ace-king is that if you open an early position with ace-king, and certainly that's a standard and good play, um, if someone raises behind you, you're probably in some kind of trouble, and it's, it, it's going to be hard to win a big pot with ace-king. And sometimes you're up against a big hand like two aces, uh, and you're in really big trouble. One of the ways that you sort of avoid the problems of playing, particularly a hand like ace-king offsuit, which doesn't have a whole lot of huge hands to flop, it's certainly a good racing hand. Um, but a hand like ace-king doesn't flop a lot of flushes or straights, um, is you might want to try limping in with ace-king occasionally. And so you limp in up front, comes around. 
if no one raises you, they're probably not going to put you on an ace king. It's not very often that people limp in with ace king. But if someone does raise behind you, well, now you can come back and you can make a big re raise with ace king. For the same reason that when you limp in and re raise with two aces, that that may not be a great play because you get a hand like two jacks to fold. Now, when you limp in with a hand like ace king, and now it comes back to you after it's been raised and you make a big re raise, you are going to get hands like two queens and two jacks and two tens to fold. Um, and uh, and that's a good thing with ace king because they are a favorite against you, and you just don't have to play the pot. You're going to pick up the money that's that's in the pot. Uh, really, the only two hands that you're really scared of are aces or kings, and since you have a king and an ace in your hand, those aren't likely hands for you to run into. Now, if the only two hands you're going to limp in with are hands like two aces or maybe an ace king, I think your I think your play again would be a little too predictable. So again, just on very rare occasion, maybe you throw in a six five suited to limp in with. And of course if it does get raised behind you, you're gonna throw it away. Um, but this is a hand almost no one's gonna put you on a six high when you limp in up front. Um, but early on in a tournament, you would only consider doing this if you had a very big stack. And maybe the blinds were very small relative to everyone's stack at the table. So this would usually be a play reserve for early on in a tournament. So if you limp in up front and your opponents um, have seen you limp in with hands like two aces or ace-king offsuit or six-five suited, they're really going to be confused and they're not going to know what to put you on. You, the one thing you don't want in no-limit hold'em is to be predictable. And if you kind of mix up the occasional upfront limp but you have a variety of hands when you do it, um, that's going to make you a much more dangerous player. I'd like to pause here for a moment and talk about the size of your opening raises pre-flop. If you remember, in the, in the earlier tape, the beginning tape, I had you uh, opening the pot for about four times the big blind when you came into a pot. The reason I had you do that is because your pre-flop play using the pre-flop strategy sheet is going to get up to intermediate level or so pretty quickly. Um, but with your level of inexperience, playing on the flop, 4th Street and 5th Street is probably not going to be so good. So I chose a rather large opening raise to limit the number of times you have to play on the flop and after. Um, and also to maximize your amount of action before the flop when I feel pretty confident that your play, if you follow the sheet, is pretty good. Now that you've started to play a little more and now you're moving on to an intermediate or higher level, I'd like to see you start to open the pot for more like three times the big blind. This is going to encourage a little more action. Of course, you're still going to be pretty selective about the hands you start. So I'm going to expect you to have the best hand a lot uh, when you get called. But you're going to get called more often and you're going to start playing on the flop and on 4th Street and 5th Street more. But these are very profitable situations once you become comfortable with the game. So again, on this tape, I'm going to be assuming about three times the big blind raise, whereas in the earlier tape, it was more like four or five times the big blind. Okay, we're now going to look at one of my favorite tells, and it's the kind of tell that you really want to be watching for uh, sort of out of the corner of your eye, and it's a very profitable tell when you do get to see it. Uh, so here we have a typical hand. Let's imagine that the game is full. There have been a lot of folds, and now we're coming around to Lori, and she folds her hand, and now uh, it's up to Jim, and he's in cutoff position. He takes a look at his hand, and it's, it's not very good, and he folds. And if, if you've been sitting in the big blind watching this action, and now it comes around to Mylene, and she's going to make it 600 here on the button, you know, and you look down at sort of a mediocre hand, a uh, hand like Jack-8 or, or, or really any two cards, and you probably throw your hand away. But if we pause this now uh, and we go back to what Mylene was doing before the action came up to her, and if you were noticing this out of the corner of your eye, I think you'd have a very profitable situation here. So while Lori and Jim were folding their cards, Mylene took a look at the 9-7 offsuit, which isn't a very good hand, and did a very typical thing that people do when they look down at two cards that aren't very good and they assume they're not going to be in the pot. They get distracted. Cocktail waitress comes up and they start talking to the cocktail waitress or they order a drink or they talk to their neighbor here like Mylene is doing or they just start looking off into space because they're not expecting to play the pot. And now as Jim is about to fold. You see, she looks over and she notices, oh, look at this. Everyone's folding to me. Maybe I can try and pick up the pot. And uh, after he does fold, she looks down and she grabs her $600 and she makes her bet. Now, if you've been watching all of this, you realize there's almost no chance she has a good hand. If she had two aces, she's not going to be talking to Jared 
um, her neighbor, she's going to be watching very intently all the action coming up to 